Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. I'm going to be setting some muskrat traps today, so I want to do a real short series of videos on your options for stabilizing conibears. So this is the 110 conibear. Now this is a great small game trap, great survival trap, but what I've had a lot of luck with it is setting it in runs for muskrats. So the muskrats come under these holes in the pond and they'll walk along the bottom. They leave essentially just like a deer trail under the water. So it's pretty easy to identify and this set into the water, similar to a blind trail set that you would set for a coon, uh, works pretty well. I've had a lot better luck of these using these than foothold traps you know with other types of sets. So the problem with a 110 conibear you can see it's like a suitcase style trap where it's going to close on the animal killing it instantly is it doesn't stabilize itself. If you just set this thing up it'll just tip right over before the animal can trip it. So there's several options you know commercial and homemade to get these to stabilize and I'm going to show you a few of these in a short series. So the first option I'm going to show to stabilize a 110 conibear is going to be the wood slat method. Now this isn't actually a wood slat, this is a wood 2x2 two two, uh, from the lumber yard. But any scrap material would work and you could bushcraft something like this pretty quick with an axe. Uh, essentially you need a long stake to drive down into the ground depending on how deep your water is. And there's a string and a wedge and I'll show you how that all goes together. Okay, so here's our set 110 conibear. And so what we have here, this is a approximately three foot piece of one by two. You know, you could use a lath board, you could, uh, you know, cut a stick down. But we have, you know, about an 18 inch piece of paracord with a wedge. So the first thing we're going to do, we've got this ring on the spring. We're going to pass the stake through the ring of the spring and then through the chain itself. Now this is actually going to stake, this, you're going to use this for your stake. So you would drive this into the mud and you would set the height that you want your trap because you remember you know this is going to be down deeper into a set so some of these deeper muskrat runs you know they could be ankle deep so you can uh, float it to the height you want and then the wedge locks it in. Now that's going to be awfully hard to see here. But again you can set the angle you want the trap then you can kinda you know give it a little set to get it all exactly like you want it. So here's our stabilized trap. So if this wasn't properly stabilized, the animal could just hit the counter bear and knock it over. Uh, here's our wedge holding the trap in the upright position. And this stake lets us float it up and down height-wise and also stabilize, uh, stakes the trap out. Now I'm going to set this up in the air so you can see a little bit better. But the beauty of this is with this cord, okay, this stake here is going to be you know buried into the mud. When the trap is tripped, your wedge is going to be dislodged from the trap and is going to be floating. So that's going to be an indicator to you that your trap has been tripped without having to get down into the mud and feel your trap itself. So you'll see as I trip this trap the wedge itself is going to become free. And then this would naturally float to the top. So the lath board muskrat stake is something that you can make yourself out of you know pretty much free material that you got around. You know if you've got old uh, two by fours you can rip them down you know a little bit of cordage and if push comes to shove you could craft something like this in the field in a matter of minutes. So there's a run behind me here I'm gonna go ahead and set this trap. Alright now it's easy to spot muskrat trails when you're on dry land. Problem is you know when you get into the water you start uh, kicking up the sediment uh, they disappear real quick. Um, fortunately and unfortunately they're pretty easy to find because they're easy to trip in. Uh, right now I have maybe a foot difference in height from my left foot to my right foot. That's because I found a muskrat run with my right foot. <laughs> so I am within two inches of the top of my hip waders right now. I don't know how well that's going to show up. Uh, I'm just barely um, covered here on my right foot. So it's pretty easy to identify the trails just by kicking around. 
and that's exactly the benefit of the you know adjustable height counter bears like this so I'm gonna set my spring at an upward angle pass through the spring pass through the chain now wooden stakes are fine on muskrats you know, you want nothing to do with wooden stakes when it comes to, you know, if you were to accidentally catch a coon. Um, mink are pretty mean fighters too, but in a deeper water set like this, I'm more comfortable with that because I'm less likely to get a coon, and if I get a mink, it's probably going to drown down pretty quick. Uh, whenever I go closer to the bank, like on a hole set or something, you know, I do not use wooden uh, slats in that situation. So right now, like I said, I've got this marked with my right foot. so. I'm going to set my stake. And I'm going to take the counter bear all the way down to the bottom. And I'm going to feel down alongside the edge of this and set the spring. Okay, now I can feel the bottom of that trap and I'm just off the bottom of the run itself. You know, if this were deeper water, I might have to get closer to the bank, but I believe what I've got right here is muskrats are coming out and under, so they're not necessarily traveling up and down the bank, they're coming out from under a dent. So a situation like this, you know, this is a perfect setup for this. So you see my stake. So it's probably about six inches in the ground right now because I did not go into the, the valley of the trail itself. I went right beside it. That's why I set that upward angle on the counter bear spring. So when I make, take my daily uh, checks, if I see my wedge floating, I know this trap's tripped. So for a cheap, easy, versatile way to stabilize your 110 counter bear, you know, pick up some scrap lumber and give it a try. This has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you next time.